Consider the following transition matrices. Identify the transient and recurrent states and the irreducible closed sets in the Markov chains. Give reasons for your answers. Now, before we, before we start these examples here, there's three examples. I'm just going to go over what it means to be transient, recurrent, irreducible, and closed. So I've written out these definitions at the top. A set C is called irreducible if whenever I and J are an element of C, I communicates with J. Simply, if you've seen multiple Markov chains, it's when we can get from one state to another in a certain set. It's all irreducibility means. It's pretty simple. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna come in, to come into play here when we're looking at these uh, recurrent states, and uh, you'll see why as, as, as we get going with these examples. Now a set C is closed if it is impossible to get out of the set. So let's take sets 1, 2, and 3 for example. Set 1 and 2 speak to each other. Set 3 speaks to 2, but 1 and 2 only speak to each other. So once we're in one or once we reach state 1 or 2, we cannot get out of being in states 1 and 2. This is all this means. It's C is a closed set then, if, if C is the set of states 1 and 2. Now, if C is a finite, closed, and irreducible set, then all states in C are recurrent. So you can see, if we can just prove that some of these subsets of these, of these Markov chains are, are closed and irreducible, then we know that all of the states in that, in that subset are going, to be, are going to be recurrent. Now, moving on, if state A goes to state B, but state B doesn't go to state A, then state A is transient. Now... This means if state A can get to state B. If there's a step between that, that's okay. But the big, the big point is that we can get from one state to another. It doesn't matter about the number of steps, but it is impossible once we get to that state to get back to where we started. So this is the definition of transients or, or a state being transient. So we'll start here with the, with the first uh, Markov chain. Now note I, I represented all of these Markov chains graphically here with these blue circles and green arrows. And what I'm doing here is that, let's take one for, ex for example. We'll start here. One can get to, to, it can go back to state one, but I just didn't draw these arrows because it really isn't necessary for uh, us to think about the fact that one, if we're in one, there's three different possibilities, right? We can either stay in one, we can go to state two or we can go to state three. There's zero probability of getting to state four or five, so that's why there's no arrows to four and five. I just want to let you guys briefly know how I've set up these, these, uh, these graphical representations. I'm sure you've seen them before. Uh, just for those of you that haven't, uh, this is a really, really easy way to visually see what is closed and what is recurrent and, and what is transient, and we'll see here shortly. So that being said, let's start with, we can start with state one here in this first example. I'm just going to scroll up. If we need to reference those definitions, I will, uh, I'll go back there so you guys can all see them. So one speaks to state two, but two doesn't speak to state one. Now I'm using this notation of the arrow to represent that one communicates with two and this arrow with a dash through it where two doesn't communicate with one. And by our definitions above, if you guys remember, if state A goes to state B, but state B doesn't go to state A, then state A is transient. So we've got two going to one, or one going to two, excuse me, and two not going to one. Therefore, one is transient. So likewise, we have three going to two, but two does not go back to three. And we can see here, right, we can get to 2 from 3, but there's no way for 2 to get back to 3, right? There's, there's just no way. So 3 is also transient. And again, 5 communicates with 2, or it communicates with 4 also. I'll just write 4 here, down below. But 2 and 4 don't communicate with 5. Therefore, 5 is also transient. Now let's really quick look at the, look at the last, uh, last two here. We've got 2 and 4. So we said that a set C is called irreducible if whenever I and J are elements of C, then I communicates with J. Well, 2 communicates with 4 and 4 communicates with 2. So that would make this set 
closed, right? If we have this set, let's name it C to be to use the same uh, same notation as the definitions. So this is closed, or excuse me, this is irreducible. Now this set is also closed, right? Because they say we started at state five. Well, if we don't go back to state five and we go to state four, state two, we just remain in state four and state two. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no changing this. That we're we're just we're stuck there. We can't we can't get out. We can only get to two. And we can only get to four. If you if you see the Markov chain to the left, um, you've got 50-50 chance of going to two and four. And oh, that's it from from both from starting from either state. You've got a 50-50 chance that you're going to go to either two or four. And there's nowhere else you can go. So this is definitely closed. Also, so two four is closed. Now by our third definition here, if C is closed and finite irreducible set, then all states are recurrent. So simply by that definition, we're saying two and four are recurrent. So we've uh, we've gone through states one through five. We've we've noted if they're transient and recurrent. We've also stated we've also found the set that is irreducible and it's closed.